Okay. You get a quick look at her and she no, disappears. Okay. Ah, there again. Okay, okay. Now we see. Now we see what you look like. Sure. All these comments he making, all these harassing comments that people are feeling shy to show themselves. Hey, Charles, we'll start. Huh? We'll start if you don't mind. It's called five minutes. Yeah, it's okay, only five okay, minutes. Yeah. I talk for five minutes. You can keep me going for as long as you want, and you can drop out when you want. Okay, that's the rule. And it's being recorded, so yeah. If, yeah. if you don't want to say anything, you're welcome to. Or if you want me to cut anything later, you can also request. That is also possible. So st going straight to the point. Yeah. Uh, when we produce something creative, whether it is words or uh, music or photographs or video, we automatically think in terms of the copyright default because copyright is the standard which we are all used to. Now, along comes the Creative Commons, which is an option to the copyright regime. Okay, uh, to move to go one step back, uh, actually uh, earlier it was thought that the option is copyright, hundred percent copyright or zero percent copyright. You know what uh, Lewis was doing on our group is something like zero percent copyright. He, he he was not putting he was not uh, releasing the copyrights completely, but he was saying you do what you want with it. Okay, so so that would be closer to the public domain if he if he so choose a license, it would be like the public domain. Instead of all copyright and zero copyright, Creative Commons says some rights reserved. So it is a approach where you reserve some of the rights you want to reserve. Okay, so there are various permutations and combinations as I was telling Cliff yesterday. It could be like I am releasing all rights or I am releasing uh, the rights to be copied but with attribution. So you can copy my work but you have to say it is by Tino Desai, it's by Frederick Norona, it's by Carlos Gracias, whatever. Or you could say that I am releasing all my rights with attribution but not for commercial purposes. Another commercial publisher cannot sell it but all my friends and unknown persons can freely copy my work and and uh, share it with others even if i know, don't know them they can take it they, i'm giving this as a universal right and the last option is also share alike share alike says that supposing i put out one photo or one article or a piece of code online you can take it and you can use it but you cannot say that your work derived from that is copyrighted is copyrighted makes sense no because you have gained from my work so I'm saying that you can share it, but not, not to the exclusion of others. I'm sharing it with you, but you have to share it with others, which is why Microsoft and all get, get a bit unnerved by this kind of thinking. They say, they say all this uh, copyleft and creative commons is a virus. And you know, once it comes in there, you, you, you're stuck with it and all that's, that's their perspective. Now, uh, this kind of license can be used for any number of uh, creative products. The first, uh, I think, I think the first, uh, the first uh, application of it came from software. I might be wrong on this. I need to check up. Came from software in the 80s, the free software movement, Richard Stallman and all that. So they started applying it to code, to code. But as you will agree with me, uh, each product is different from the other. So, for example, a recipe, a food recipe or code. If, if I take half of your work and, and uh, dabble and put in half of my work and create a superior product, neither you won't have a product, you won't have a problem with it. But if Tino is writing a short story and I take his short story and I adapt it, I adapt it to suit my ending, then he would say like, you have mauled my story. You have mauled my story. He, he would not like it. So, so there are different kinds of licenses which have been created for different kinds of products. Creative Commons is one big flagship, but there are many other licenses like the, like the, like the GNU, uh, uh, what's that, uh, you know, GNU GPL, General Public License, which is for software. Then there are licenses for music, you know, free music. There are a whole set of licenses. You can choose. You can choose and you can use whatever you want. Uh, as, as far as how you apply it, it's quite simple. Uh, the, the, the thing is that, as you know, when you, you know, when you create a work, there is actually no need to copyright it. It is automatically copyrighted. Okay. Uh, there is a copyright office of India, whatever, where you can legally copyright it, pay a few rupees and get it, get your copyright registered and all. But uh, technically speaking, there is no need. Copyright is automatic. If a second standard student writes an exam paper with some exaggeration, it is automatically copyrighted. 
his or her work is automatically copyrighted now whether whether that copyright can be protected or not that's a different debate as rovina will tell you because she's from the world of mainstream publishing and all you know i think big publishers can can and do protect their copyright but small players like you and me you know it will may be very difficult to to uh, to uh, protect one's copyright you have to go to court and follow them up lot of cost and all that so so the same is with creative commons you know i'm saying like tomorrow you can argue what if someone violates my terms and all see that it is it is it is uh, you know some of it is untested domain but some of it is also uh, it's a it's a matter of faith and convenience and uh, and you know uh, the fact that we we have some code of conduct among mm -hmm. ourselves so yeah uh, last point i want to make is that uh, see copyright if you want to understand it now rovina will get upset with what i'm going to say next but the fact of the matter is that copyright was actually started by by the yeah yeah amit just a minute ah huh? uh, last point was started by the statute of queen anne it's called the statute of anne or something where the queen of britain one of the colonial queens wanted to keep control over which printer was publishing what so the copyright regime was created for that and then along the way it was it was it was uh, redrafted and shown as if it is meant to protect the author and all some aspects of the copyright regime are pretty bizarre in the sense that uh, even 60 years after your death the copyright remains it goes to your estate or your family or whatever now this is supposed to uh, enhance productivity how it will enhance productivity of a dead person i don't know I have friends in South Africa who argue in favor of readers' rights, where they say that not only the authors' rights have to be protected, which is important, no doubt. We have to protect the authors' rights, but even readers have some rights in terms of sharing in the public knowledge, and you know, considering that all knowledge is based on other derived knowledge and things like that. There are rough edges to this argument. I have not put it in the best possible terms. I am just saying that there are options available. Uh, much this debate has progressed much along the way. there are books which guide you on how to do it you can go to creativecommons.org and choose the license you want the standard license now is uh, cc 4.0 creative commons 4.0 they keep on improving it as the time goes by and as they realize that there are some flaws here there are some bugs and all they keep up, uh, uh, improving it and you can choose by by is by attribution where it says uh, you have to attribute whatever work you take from me or you can use uh, nc means non commercial or you can you can use sa which is share alike so you can use all these codes you just mix them up like a recipe and say that i am releasing my photograph under uh cc 4.0 by by attribution sa share alike non commercial nc something like that and what but what does the first entail cc 4 Uh, so so cc4 is a fourth version of the creative commons license so they have gone from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 each is an improvement of no, the but, earlier no, version no, what what are the conditions like by and uh, others one is obvious what the condition is yeah. but what are the conditions in cc4 so so cc is basically just this understanding that instead of all rights reserved we take some rights we reserve some rights so cc is the umbrella term for all of it if you go to the web page they describe exactly what are the conditionalities and all that's the that's the infrastructure like and then then you add the extra spices in terms of the options you choose yeah. it's very self explanatory you have to register first on no. the creative commons no. website or no what? no 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 it's just a question of using using a license you know so, so you, one has to just put it on and it will yes. come up you can get a website on that uh, not a website see you are uh, using what? a license so so sure. if you for example i release a book tomorrow we have actually released some books valmiki's book on on uh, margaon's uh, holy spirit is under creative commons so so on the book we say instead of uh, c circle there is a there is a opposite uh, uh, you know uh, logo which is the c in the ulta direction not facing right but facing left and it says c and a circle around it it says creative commons 4.0 so you are just adopting a license you are not registering you are not creating a website you don't have to you know it's like it's like saying copyright no copyright you know this are 2023 so you you know you're not registering it anyway you're just claiming the copyright okay so you you just have to put this line in your document yeah yeah rovina copyright rovina copyright. rovina understands the nuances much more because she has worked in the mainstream publisher so she will come up with some hard questions which i'm anticipating anyway which is fine and she will no no no, no questions rico actually even in the copyright world um there are exceptions made specifically for education and academia 
and there are no charges and copyright is waived when it comes to learning and educating but and Rubina, this applies to the irs internationally and to india as well FRRO in india ruvina it's not enough see it's not enough no because you see uh, yeah, it's not enough. i agree with you see, i agree with you i see, agree with you i don't have a, a argument <laughs> for that i agree with you then you come up with ludicrous ludicrous cases like like the like those publishers mainstream publishers suing the xerox photocopying shop of delhi university yeah. or whatever yeah. and yeah. and to add to it no see my argument is that if you if you have a for profit motive then then having a having a copyright uh, approach high cliff makes sense makes sense broadly speaking okay because your goal is to is to make profit now organizations like the church like the jc's club like like an ngo like the saligao institute should we also adopt copyright by default that is my question no i'm saying that even say a church which which is uh, promoting just promoting uh, promoting its own views its own point of view okay it is not doing it for money why should it by default adopt a copyright regime when its goal is not even to make money and rovina i'll go one step further and say that see creative commons might sound uh, you know economically nonsensical but people like me argue that it is a fantastic uh, it's a it, it is a very workable uh, business business uh, option also yeah. business option also for some kind of players not for all kinds of players like for example i put about 70000 of my photos under creative commons on flickr and large part of that about 4 5000 on uh, uh, wikimedia commons i'm up- uploading at the moment and i feel that i've not yeah. lost i've not lost sorry is there an ownership uh, is there an ownership to creative commons no because, because i know that the yt owner yeah started wikipedia as a for profit motive for many years yeah and he ran it as a for profit motive until he founded the foundation and then opened yeah. it up to this worldwide group of you know volunteers who now police and monitor it and make sure it is still that are loophole but creative commons belongs to whom so so that's the thing uh, see creative commons doesn't belong to anyone it is like uh, it is like the commons okay it is like a comunidad which is not even restricted by membership in goa whereas in goa the comunidad still have membership and gaonkar and all so you are creating a commons there now wikipedia as you said no there it is it is not so simple a story as is sometimes portrayed that jimmy wales is this good guy and all he had actually started out a, a porn company with partnership with someone else and uh, then he started a commercial web uh, encyclopedia which was not working but it's not only wikipedia which is pushing this there is this creative commons group which is uh, which is which is which is all uh, you know uh, Lawrence Lessig and all these professors from Stanford who have understood the com- uh, the logic oops session went down sorry ah, sorry no sorry 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 no sorry no sorry, no sorry, no sorry, no sorry who who have understood you can hear me no now yeah yeah who have understood the logic and the and the, the benefits of this especially for in a world which is uh, deprived of knowledge uh, you know in that sense so today the concept has spread to all fields apart from music it spread to academic publishing in the form of open access journals it spread to photography it spread to videography you know and my argument is that small players have a lot to gain rather than losing i always say whatever i have given i won back 100 fold from you know in terms of people people saying that no this is a good guy he sharing let us help him there's some one wanting some writer let's put him in touch of course the question is whether it helps commercial you you'll always say okay your photography is not your main line of bread and butter so for you it's easy for you to share you'll tell me okay uh, that that there's a it's open there's a open debate on that uh there's open debate on that and uh, you know even people who are commercially doing something like for example musicians uh, there is this group called grateful dead and unlike the others logically you would think that you want to protect your music but grateful dead started putting out their music whenever they recorded at at concerts earlier earlier like the tiats today they used to announce at concerts please don't record please don't share today that has become a little bit less and bands like grateful dead are promoting the people they say please record please share you know spread the music music is meant to be shared put it out live and it has helped the group in a huge way and there are others also other examples which have been studied yeah. sorry 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 yeah 
Please, please, Amit, Professor. No, fine. no, I just wanted to add some more fuel to your fire, which I agree with, which is that uh, in scientific and technical publishing, which I'm very familiar with, uh, Springer Nature, Elsevier, are actually predatory organizations that have profited yes. enormously from free yes. work by all that, of us. That's the so biggest. That is, that is absolutely no excuse today. That to is the biggest bone of commencement. Actually, right. that is the, where the arguments start with the right. academic journals because research is done so that it can reach the widest audience. Not only that. And these guys are the custodians of that and they don't let it go anywhere. And, and not only that, the custodians of the quality and the, and the validation of that research, we are the ones who do it. And, and you know, all the work that we do in writing, reviewing, and actually even typesetting, even that is done by, by authors today. Go to these journals to make a huge killing on that and, and return nothing to the community at all. So there is no good excuse for not having everything open access in the world of scientific and technical publishing. And the last thing I wanted to say was that uh, there was a Brazil, there is a Brazilian author who, who is very smart and he followed the Grateful Dead model. And he used to say, and I'll tell you his name in a bit, he said that his goal was to, he knew he would be famous, he, he had become famous when his books were sold at the traffic lights in New Delhi. He actually said this, and this is Paulo Coelho. So he actually encouraged his books to be, to be, you know, uh, pirated. To be pirated. Yeah. To be pirated. <laughs> yeah. He actually paid for pirating of his own books so that they would become. So, of course, he's not a great author or anything like that. But uh, the, the idea definitely works. If you make something open access, people will read it. People will recommend it to other people and so on. And in fact, my radical view nowadays is that everything should be like an archive in scientific and technical publishing. So good things tend to rise up and bad things just sink to the bottom. And that's it, you know, like literature or anything else. Rico, will you take us step by step? I mean, like, you know, yeah. start with the URL we need to use to start. And then yeah. after that, so, if you can do screen share also, that would be nice. So so if you just go to creativecommons.org, you get, you get an overview of the license. And then it is just a question of stringing together your own masala and deciding what combination permutation suits you first i used to think that you know non commercial is better but then people like wikipedia say that if you want to share your photos with us you should allow reuse by anyone and everyone because uh, tomorrow you know it should it should not be like a virus which which because of five photos in the in the full site they cannot share the site and check cannot share the other work so they want a common common playing field so you can choose whatever you want whatever suits your field if you are into music like Carlos, you would need to find a, 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 a license which suits music. If you just Google for say, a, you know, a shareable license for music or open music licenses or something, you will find all these things. So it is, it is, see the technical part of it is very simple how it applies. Accepting it is like, you know, it's accepting a new language or a new religion or something. It's counterintuitive to what we, we've been brought up to believe, you know, so that is a, that is a tough part. So, I, if I understand you rightly, uh, Rico, yeah. going to the Creative Commons site, which I've just done, is only for information. Yeah, yeah. There is, no the, there is no registration. There is no registration. No registration or posting something on no. that. It's only to no. get your information. Yes. yes. And you use that. Uh, but now yeah. you are saying that, okay, in a book, if you publish a book, you yeah. can put that uh, Ulta C and circle and say that. But uh, suppose it's just, uh, you know, uh, something that you are doing online or yeah. a photograph. How do you specify the, uh, the, the, the type of copy left on it? Yeah. So, so, for example, I would put one line like this, you know, on the article. So, I'm saying uh, CC 4.0 BY SA NC. Okay. So, then you the onus is on that person to, to understand what it is. You can spell it out in words if you want. And on a photograph? Uh, that one line in the caption, you can go there. Yeah. One line okay. in the caption can go there. Flickr, for example. Now, uh, even uh, yeah, even even YouTube allows you to use standard YouTube license or it allows you to use Creative Commons 4.0. It gives you two options. So, it's, that's up to you. So, now, for example, I've shared all my videos on Creative Commons. And the funny thing is, 
people don't read the fine print so they come to me asking for permission can we use a bit of your photo in some documentary something and i never say no i never say no and you know it's it's amazing the kind of uh, help it you know the kind of see because what 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 does a writer want a writer wants visibility for his work uh, you know which is some form of payment also uh, a writer wants a business model which which this can i argue people like me argue this can actually become a business model tomorrow because it it enhances your visibility more people are seeing your work you don't want you know to be paid like you know uh, a good sum and just have your work stuck in behind some paywall or something and in any case as professor amit pointed out the academic publishers are not paying the the academic writers and still they are sticking it behind a paywall which okay, which, but which let's, sorry Riku, let's go to let's go to a more individual level okay yeah. i'm fine i i know the problem with big academic publishers yeah. and all and it's a very very valid problem uh what about individuals and how do you feel about this individuals yeah. who are like as you said you know they taking a bit from here and there and wherever and then monetizing how do you feel you feel comfortable about that see it's a it's a double edged sword okay it's a double edged sword mm. now now for example uh that's the, that that's where wikipedia has reached at this stage they they have been selling content to big players like google and company so there are there is a rift within the within the group saying that this is a break of the social contract and there are others who feel that if we want to grow we cannot be puritans in our approach you take the same example of ibm and and uh, free software and all these kind of things okay ibm allowed uh, all their parts to be cloned and apple didn't so finally who grew it was ibm which grew and it was they were cloned by commercial players okay and at the same time free software took the approach that our software can be used by anyone for any purpose and the biggest corporations including ibm started funding free software in a huge way so there were days in the 90s and 2000s where we would go for conferences to bangalore and we would find as if manna was falling from the heavens okay it was very easy for for free software for creative commons people to convince institutions like the like uh, you know the un undp or unesco or something that why don't you you know promote these kind of licenses because otherwise what is the situation all these international so called development organizations are paying contractors every time to create this to create a slightly different resource so under a creative commons you create pay once and let everyone you know kind of uh, take it forward and 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 uh, and uh, improve on it so so that way i think it's a double edged sword even allowing corporations to play with your work has benefits to you in a certain sense in a certain sense i would not i would not have reservations so if if i'm going to ride on your your wings okay it is it is a double edged sword but now 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 to take to take the mainstream example rovina to give you a specific case our friend bina naik this lady who's an amazing artist and does all covers she's also discovered a talent as a writer she wrote a book called starfish pickle which was promised to become into a film so i thought like you know it's just a promise it won't become i was pleasantly surprised to realize see read news reports that is a, it is actually being made into a bollywood film but here's the rub it's being shot in malta starfish pickle the story is typically goan now someone in bollywood is obviously paying for it and all that they've got all the rights and everything but they have decided that it is best shot in malta so it now see these guys are paying you but they've destroyed the very essence of the story you know because this is a story set in goa where the main lead reader uh, the main uh, uh, lady featuring is this goan uh, you know kind of uh, scuba diver who sees all these dead bodies and all the settings are in saligaon near the church and arpora and arambol and all this hippie goa and all and they've shifted it to malta so so you're losing something there also no you're getting paid for it but you're but, losing but is she getting paid but she is getting paid for her work tino tino see see she has, this is she has adopted a traditional route she's gone through an agent so she will oh. get paid she will get paid yeah. the, you know how the oh. agents literary agents yeah, work yeah, yeah, they take yeah, 15% yeah. or something but they get you a good deal so that i'm not saying that doesn't work see my argument is this if you're big if you're if you're writing harry potter and all those kind of works then forget creative commons it's not for you but that applies maybe to 1 or 0.001% of the creative creators in the world what about the rest the large bulk would have a stake in sharing their work that's my argument so my approach is this i write 
because I have to earn a living. So I sell my work to the newspapers. Uh, whenever possible, I put much of my work, including my books I've shared under the creative commons. If it's newspaper articles, I will not, uh, I, I may not mark it as creative commons, but I share it widely and the newspapers have some kind of loose understanding that, chalo, he's giving us credit and all, we don't mind. So in that sense, you know, I, I'm adopting that some rights approach, some rights reserved approach. Creative writing, Tino, it, there are special licenses for it. You don't want people fidgeting with your stories and those kind of things. Uh, software, there are special licenses. Music, there are special licenses. Uh, this this approach has been used everywhere. Now, you, you see what we are doing on WhatsApp. It is also a form of, of uh, crowdsourcing, no? where we crowdsource each other's knowledge, each other's inputs. Sorry, sorry, uh, Clifford, Clifford. Yeah, no. What I wanted to say is when you're a professional, yeah. And you will put your stuff, you don't want to put your stuff free. But actually it pays to yeah. put some stuff free. This is what all these guys do on YouTube and all. Yeah? They put something, they'll put half their, I'm talking about say counseling, no therapy. Yeah. They'll put a particular procedure. They'll put the beginning and they'll put the end. So as to tantalize you, you get a lot of information. But then you come to know about this person. So it, it always pays to put a little bit on wiki commons. It, it, it's like a teaser. You get your returns. Teaser. Clifford, but that's a debate. Now that's a debate. Now whether you know earlier before before free software you had this shareware. Okay, uh, Professor Amit will be well uh, accustomed to the idea of shareware. And shareware used to be also called crippleware because you can use it for 30 days and it'll suddenly stop functioning. So the question is how far can we take these licenses? Will it really benefit us? Will it benefit professionals or only should it be only used by amateurs? All these things are open to discussion. I'm not saying we have answers. Uh, about shareware and so on, I, I, won't, I, I, I won't make a comment about shareware specifically, but if you look at Linux, Unix, the whole ecosystem, as well as Android, Android, all the development was done by individuals all over the world. Google benefited from this distributed intelligence by leaving the system open, the operating system open, right? And then the, the, the mobile manufacturers, they, they customize like Apple and Samsung and they close, up, close off the operational system to most users. So there is a perverse kind of thing where you get all the benefits from the community and then you, you know, close it off and, and make profit. So no, it's, it is, professor, it's, professor, it's, if, if the licenses are well drafted, no? It will yeah. be very difficult for them to take over take over the the intellectual property. See, some licenses like BST, Berkeley Berkeley Distribution, whatever, uh, right. they they are very prone to being captured. But GPL, for example, Richard Stallman, which with all his with all his fanaticism, like jihad like fanaticism, he has right. made bloody sure that no one can hijack it, in that sense. And, and uh, you know, actually he was one of the early guys who, who, who felt the need to, uh, to, take, to take forward all these kind of thinkings. And Creative Commons is, a, is well known now, but his predates that and the thinking has spread to many fields. So there's open source biology, there's open source law, where, where you know, uh, and many other 20, 30 other different fields, uh, open, open libraries and uh, many, many different fields it spread to different fields. The, the thing is that you can use uh, you can use this uh, crowdsourced form of collaborating to create large structures you know uh, as described in this book the cathedral and the and the bazaar by eric raymond where he argues that the cathedral style of building is one style where it's which is top down and you know hierarchical and and directed and all whereas the bazaar style is more self organizing you know, it comes from bottom up and it's a bit romanticized, but it uh, makes a lot of sense. Right. I'd like to ask one provo provocative question yeah, yeah. just to get your input, everybody's input. What about copyright, copyright or copy left when Jack GPT is one of the co-authors? Yeah. What yeah. happens in this yeah. case? Yeah, there are, there are all kinds of debates here. Even the earlier debate was what happens to copyright when, when if, you're, if a monkey takes your camera and shoots the photograph. This has actually been tried in courts. This has been tried in courts because the monkey has clicked the photo and then the judges say, no, no, animals cannot express their creative freedom and something like that. So they say the copyright belongs to the owner of the camera, which is very funny. I'm sure on this, to end on a funny note, I'm sure, not end, we can carry on. On a funny note, uh, I'm sure you've heard of this case or probably not heard of this case. 
so there was this uh, uh, tiat 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 uh, act uh, producer who whose photo has been shot and by some photographer and the tiat guy gives it to uh, some uh, poke vendor or something to use it on his uh, on his uh, small uh, three wheeler auto rickshaw goods auto rickshaw and then uh, this photographer comes to him and says who gave them permission so this tiat guy says i gave them permission so the the photographer says no you can't but he says it's my photo so so you know uh, the copyright laws are so crazy that that uh, the owner of the of of uh, of the photo of the photograph is the person who supposedly created it so now when chat gpt comes in who is the owner that's that's uh, that's a valid question Vikram, can we just do one? Just, yeah. Or if you can share screen and just do one upload of a photograph. So first, get the license. Yeah. And then upload to Flickr. And I mean, like, let's see how it's done. And we can expand. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, that. sorry, sorry, sorry. <coughs> So, so uh, Rovina, you can hear me now. You can hear me. Yes. So I won't yeah. uh, not Flickr. I'll use I'll use uh, Wikimedia Commons. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to Wikimedia Commons page. Can you see? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we can yeah. see your screen. Then, then I'll say upload file uh, on the right hand side. Upload file. Okay. The blue tab. Uh, yeah, yeah. Upload file. This uh, this side. No. Uh, yeah. Under the under the Wikimedia Commons logo. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Okay, and then I'll select a media file to share. I'll just select one, for example. If I go to other locations, new volume. F N. So then it's it's just selecting the photo from my hard drive at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's this uh, Tiat actor. Okay. Uh, oops, this is not a good. Yeah. Oh, it's already online. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This one has already been shared. Let me choose another one. Anyway, then you just go further down and you you uh, upload. You click on the upload. Yeah, button, right? yeah, yeah. Then yeah, then I'll choose a photo. Then I'll say okay, it will it will upload it here. It's it's uploading it. Then I'll yeah, I'll choose on this and say continue. Then here, this is the important part. It's asking me. This site requires you to provide copyright information from the work to make sure everyone can legally reuse it. Okay. Then I'll say click on the first one. This is my work. And then I. This we can't see. This you can't, can't see. see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to. It's too small. Uh, scroll down. No, 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 no. It's just stuck on the on the earlier. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So what? What? Why you no, can't we, see? We, because no, no. It's it's still on that upload thing. Yeah. Okay. 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 Sorry. No, sorry. 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 Yeah. Huh? One sec. Yeah, I've got the wrong. I'm sharing the wrong screen. I will share the right screen, and now it will. Uh... Upload. Yeah, this one. Okay. I so... think we'll have to ask Hector to give his medicinal plants. Yeah. So so now, for example, if I say upload picture here, I'll I'll just choose a picture on my. Now you can see it moving. Is it moving? Yeah. Okay. So, Select media. Yeah, yeah. 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 So so now I'll choose the right picture. And uh, 
it's a bit data but it's okay they'll uh, it will be ro- rotated so now it's uploading the file mm. then i will say continue and okay. this is the crucial part this says this site requires you to provide copyright information for the work to make sure everyone can legally use it if i say this file is not my work then i have to give source and author and all because they are very careful about see they don't want to encourage piracy sharing sharing doesn't mean that you can share tom dick and harry's work you can share only your own work so this file is my own work then i say i frederick norona the copyright holder irrevocably grant anyone okay, now just tell me why tino tino one sec tino one sec one sec this is important okay i the copyright holder irrevocably grant anyone the right to use this work under the creative commons attribution share alike 4.0 license okay and then i'll say the, you can choose a different license here you can choose 4.0 3.0 attribution 4.0 attribution 3.0 and cc0 which releases all rights it's like the public domain okay sorry tino sorry you were saying something no no i'm just saying why you have to put your name only as one word over there no or? no 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 see this is the login name i have chosen for wikipedia okay, okay. wikipedia allows you to use uh, any any login name you want it could be like paper fairy or it could be anonymous name also okay, okay. but uh, yeah but they they have ways of checking